Uh, it's been a while. Take two. Hello. If you're wondering where I've been, I've been working on other projects because YouTube isn't my full-time job. I work full-time freelance as a DP, so I've been busy with other projects and I just haven't had time. But let's get into the content of this video because this week I wanted to kick everything off with a video that's been in the works for a while. A while back now, I got the opportunity to put two lenses side by side, and that was the Lauer Oom 25 to 100 T2.9 and the Zeiss Lightweight 21 to 100 T2.9. Nothing too technical, just some side-by-sides really to see the basic differences and really just get a feel for where the Lauer stands against a lens that is double its price. Spoiler alert, it did really well. The first thing we tested is bokeh, because let's face it, that's a fun thing to test. As suspected, the Zeiss bokeh is more rounded compared to Lauer. Lauer has more of like a teardrop kind of eye shape. It's kind of swirly on the edges. This is exactly as expected, because when you look at the specs of both lenses, the Zeiss has 11 iris blades, which means it's going to have a more rounded bokeh. And then you've got the Lauer with nine, so it is going to have a bit more of a different shape. A lot of people do seek that really odd shape shaped bokeh, sometimes it can be a big distraction, which is why people go for something cleaner like Zeiss compared to something more vintage or something vintage like, like the Lauer Oom. It's really up to you and what you're shooting. So if you're wanting something that does look a little bit out there and a little bit different, you'd go for something vintage or something like the Lauer Oom. But if you wanted something that was very plain, not distracting at all, you go for something like Zeiss. We also did flare tests. Now flare tests are really interesting because some people really like flares and if you've been around on this channel a little bit, you'll know that I'm not a big fan of flares. It's not that I don't like them, it's that I think they are sometimes overused and sometimes they just don't really have a purpose. Use them correctly and they look really good. Looking at the Zeiss as suspected because it is a much cleaner, much sharper lens, not a lot of lens flare going on. It's very, very mild. If you're looking for more flare or the potential for more flare, I'd definitely go with the Lauer. The Zeiss is very clean, very clinical and very sharp. So it is very hard to get a good flare. It's possible, but it is different. You can see the flavor difference here. Let's move on to sharpness and coverage because those two factors are the biggest when you're deciding whether to invest in a lens or what lens to use for a certain project. Now we did project the lenses using a lens projector, but showing those results on screen via a YouTube video, you're not gonna be able to see anything that we really looked for. That is definitely something that you need to do in person. So I will recommend that you do that if you possibly can. What I can tell you from what we found is that the Lauer Oom really does stand up very well against the Zeiss. Zeiss obviously very clean, very clinical, edge to edge sharpness, looks fantastic. There's no chromatic aberration, it's good. Looking at the Lauer Oom, it is a little bit softer overall, but it's really not that bad. There might be a little bit more focus loss on the edges, but all in all, it's very impressive. And these sort of things aren't necessarily bad things about a lens. It could be something that you're looking for. These sort of things, these sort of features are typically found in more vintage style lenses, which is kind of what I found over the course of this testing is that the Lauer Oom is a bit more of a vintage style lens compared to the Zeiss. I mean, a lot of people try to get these features using filters in front of their existing lenses. So they use black promists and glimmer glass and things like that to soften the image just slightly. And that's what I think the Lauer Oom kind of brings to the table. Coverage wise, both lenses cover Super 35, so you're not really gonna run into any issues using them on pretty much any cinema camera. There's only a select few that you'd probably find an issue with. All in all, between both of these lenses, it really does depend on what you're shooting and what you're gonna use it for, as well as how much money you have, how much money you are willing to spend if you're making that investment into your kit. If you're hiring it, go ahead, try them both. Zoom lenses are extremely helpful to anybody who is needing to be quick on their feet, anybody who doesn't really have the time or the means to constantly be changing lenses, or maybe you just want to invest in a single lens for your kit. On one hand, you have the Zeiss retailing at about $10,000, weighing about two kilos. It's solid, it's robust, it's clean, it's clinical. On the other hand, you have the Lauer Oom coming in at around $5,000, so half the price, weighing slightly heavier at 2.5 kilos and offering a more vintage look in a modern body with modern conveniences. These are two different lenses, but ultimately I think the Lauer stands up really well to a competitor that is double its price. Personally, if I was kind of one person banding it and I didn't really want to be changing lenses as often, or maybe I was working in documentary field, I would probably consider looking at the Lauer just to save that little bit of extra money and use it on something else in the kit. Something I'd be really interested in seeing is how the Lauer holds up over time. I'd love to see how it goes after, you know, one or two 
two years of constant use and see how robust it actually is. I mean, it looks robust, it feels robust, it definitely doesn't feel like it's gonna break very easily, but you know, it is nice to see any wear and tear or where the wear and tear happens first, because that sort of thing is the key point in working out where a lens's weakest points are. Seeing the features of it and seeing these sort of tests is great, but seeing it over time is even better. I wanna quickly shout out the people who made this video possible. So thank you very much to Adam from Radbits Australia. He was very kind to send the Lauer Oom over to the Vision House, and that's the second person I wanna thank. I want to thank the lovely crew at the Vision House for giving us their space and letting us use their little studio space out the back to do these little tests and providing the Zeiss lightweight zoom. You can go check them out in the links in the description below. Another link that will be down there is our link of the week. This week it is Deadly and Proud. Deadly and Proud is a campaign sharing Aboriginal voices and stories of Victoria, Australia, where I am from. The aim of the campaign is to spread awareness, share knowledge, amplify voices around treaty for traditional owners on the lands on which I stand, live and work every day. I'd urge you no matter where you're from in the world, doesn't matter, go take a look at the campaign and have a listen because you might learn something. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.